All right, today we're hitting back and we're doing all dumbbells. And don't kid yourself by thinking just because we're only doing dumbbells, it's gonna be a less than workout because my argument is that we're gonna do some variations today that make you connect better with your back than any machine you could possibly use in the gym. So if you're ready, let's get after it. Whew. So one of the biggest aha moments I see with people training back is when you take the ability of their supporting muscles out of the equation. So let me give you an example. So when somebody's doing a pull down, as they're coming down, they have to generate force through that forearm, bicep, go through the actual shoulder itself, and then jump into the back. Now, obviously you can see where it can get lost along the way and it can sit in one of those muscles, and more often than not, you get a lot of bicep dominant back movements. Knowing that, we can look at ways to fix this. Now, one of the best ways that I've found is actually doing movements that keep the angle of your elbow in a fixed position. So instead of rowing straight back, you're actually wrapping your arms around you and that angle of the elbow doesn't change. I mean, you could sit at home and do this and just try it yourself. As you're sitting there pulling back, you get a great engagement of your back, but as you start to wrap around your body, you'll see your entire back becomes engaged. Oh, we're starting off with a bent over row, but like we just talked about, this is not a rowing movement. This is actually more of a reverse fly. So first thing to note is you wanna make sure that lower back is locked the entire time. That's not gonna disengage. What is gonna disengage is that middle back. You're actually gonna get a little flexion extension there, and that's gonna help you really engage that lower lat that much more. Make sure you keep your head in a neutral position. Too often do I see people try to lead the movement with their neck. I mean, unless you're trying to get hurt and you got Aflac and you're gonna be taken care of, Keep your head in a neutral position, lead with your shoulders, the neck should never change. Also, make sure you take full advantage of the contraction on this. Don't come halfway up, stop because you feel like your back's engaged. Wrap all the way around your body, really exaggerate the movement, open those shoulders. You should feel the contraction start in that mid back, that lower lat, and it should end all the way up in those mid traps. So that last dumbbell bicep video was an eye opener for me because I had a couple people reach out that were like, hey, this is great. I use my wife's pink dumbbells. It's all I have, but it works for me. Thanks for showing these exercises. Probably need to get a few more different dumbbells that maybe a little bit heavier. But with that being said, I also had other people reach out and almost think that I wasn't telling the truth. I was using 20 pounds and I was, I was struggling. I mean, the thing that I think people don't recognize or don't realize is that you know, you're not good at lifting when you can take heavy weight. Anybody can lift heavy weight and make a contraction happen and get sore. You get better when you can take a lighter weight and find ways to manipulate that weight, whether it's through gravity, change of angle, tempo, whatever it may be. When you can make 20 pounds feel like 40 pounds, now you're on the right track. I'm sure everybody watching this has done dumbbell pullovers in their life. And I remember as a kid seeing this exercise and seeing you can do it for chest or back and, and thinking like, mm, that can't be right. There's no way that that can be optimal for both. Turns out it's not. So you'll notice as you go through the movement, different muscles have to engage to get the job done. So that initial contraction comes from the lats. As you start to pull through, you get a little more tricep. And then depending on how your arms are, if they're locked out or not, if they're a little more bent, you can even get a little bit of chest in the top of that movement. Knowing that we can shorten the range of motion downwards, just the lats. We're gonna use two dumbbells because it's gonna help you with shoulder inflexibility. You're gonna notice as you're going down, if you have any issues, one side could actually be more flexible than the other. Also, you really have to concentrate. Like if you're not paying attention, these things will flare all over the place. So you gotta be locked in, that form's gotta be nice and tight, and it's gonna be a great contraction for those lats. So one thing to note here, again, that elbow is never gonna change the position. That angle doesn't change at all. I don't know if you can see my blurry ass arm in the background, but that doesn't change. And if you can do that, you're gonna get so much more engagement out of that lat, then you just have to focus on getting better at that stretch and stopping at that point where the lat is the peak of the contraction and doesn't jump into those triceps. All right, last one we're finishing up with is a variation of a static hyperextension. Now, your back will stay flat the entire time. All the movement comes from the hips. And the cool part about this is you can dictate where you want that force to go. You can keep it more middle back or you can drive it all the way up into your traps depending on how high you go in the movement. So even on these, you don't wanna just keep locked up and flex straight up. You want a little bit of a bend of those elbows so you're wrapping around your body. That'll help flex that back that much more. As always, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment below, whatever video you want me to do next, I'll get to it. Get after it, get growing. I'll talk to you soon.